My name is Jari Bolander. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Ethos Podcast. On this podcast, we're going to take a deep dive into the traits, values, beliefs, and skills of all sorts of entrepreneurs to learn how to build a more ethical, inclusive, and resilient world. Let's get started. Michael Barnett, welcome to the show. Yeah, you know, Jerry. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's very happy to be here. You're the founder and CEO of Lone Spark, which Correct. is a way to connect your customers to capital, which is kind of cool, kind of new and different. I've really not seen this sort of thing before. That's why I was really fascinated to talk with you and understand how that all works. But before we get into all that and all the fun of that, as I always like to say, I'm a pretty boring guy. I only got one question, right? And that's, uh, tell us how you got to do what you're doing today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think you know, the business of capital and of lending would probably be a pretty boring industry to most. And I fell into commercial capital by accident, really. I had gotten my start over 20 years ago in the technology sector. And just by chance, someone that I had known I had worked for a finance company, introduced me to the finance company. I was intrigued at, at what they were doing and how they were doing it and serving their customers. And I just had to be a part of it. So a couple of weeks later, I had gotten an interview and started with this company as a bright eyed, bushy tailed, still wet behind the ears, second job out of college, essentially associate at a finance company. 10 years later, was able to parlay that experience to a senior management role at a commercial capital provider. And at this commercial capital provider, that's when I really learned a lot about you know, how small businesses go about getting loans, building their business and manage their debt and equity on their books and just how businesses were built. The previous experience at the finance company that I worked for was really just a precursor to get me to a point where I could really take my career in commercial capital and just really build it into something that I consider really special. But question is, where did LoanSpark start? Well, LoanSpark really started at, that, at my first experience after graduating from college. Starting for that first, working for that first finance company is where I, I learned how businesses can, you know, how businesses can provide outsourced services to other businesses. For example, that company that I work with, work for, was the largest outsourcer of, of consumer lending in America at that time. And so outsourcing, meaning one, a bank used up to provide lending services to the bank's customers, but we did it under the brand name of the bank, which was actually pretty cool. That's what, that's white label or private label services. I loved it. I thought it was just amazing. And, and when I ended up pivoting to commercial capital services, I recognized one, that service didn't exist on the commercial capital side. The way that we did it on consumer was just revolutionary. And being able to provide those types of services on the commercial capital side, I just happened to believe it would change the game for commercial lending. Well, many, many years later, through my experience in commercial lending, there's something else that I learned. I also learned that obtaining a commercial loan was not easy for a small business. The process of obtaining the loan. Number two, the high number of predatory actors, actors meaning provider, lending providers, private funding companies, brokers, dealers, et cetera, that were in the marketplace claiming to have the small business owner's best interests at heart, come to find out, really didn't. It took me a few years to learn more about that. And once I learned that was happening in this industry, that's when I really started building the framework for LoanSpark. The blend of the first 10 years of my experience working in finance, which was for, as I mentioned before, a very large consumer, consumer lending company that was focused in the private label space, blending that with an organization that, was, that would do right by the small business, that would take care of small businesses, that was not predatory, that was looking out for the small business before it looks out for itself. So that's when I really started to build the framework of LoanSpark. Yeah, it was really five years into my commercial capital experience, about 15 years into my professional career 
in finance. And so the rest is history. You know, I, I, I have always been one of those people who, when I get a great business idea or a, or a great thought about how to revolutionize something, how to improve a product or bring something new, unique, and cool to the market, I, 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 I jot it down in my, in my iPhone notes. I jot it down and I start building the framework for this new cool thing. Lone Spark was born over ye through years of me improving the notes in my notepad and then eventually getting to the point where I was, I believed that I was smart enough, wise enough, educated and experienced enough and capitalized to be able to take this idea that I had been forming over time and really test it. And over the last two years, we've been able to successfully launch Lone Spark. We have wow. successfully exited our proof of concept. And now we are a fully operating company and have many customers who work for us. We have solved the challenges and needs for many, many, many small businesses, and we are on our way. So thank you for asking that question. I love to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds interesting because, you know, what, what, what's interesting about finance, if you don't know anything about it, right? Like I don't, part, I mean, very superficial. Really, if you're a small business and you need to mitigate some of these issues with accounts receivable, you know, how, how are you going to like get money to like operate your company? Because, you know, things come in ebbs and flows. There's terms and then there's capital to build stuff. I mean, it's a whole thing, which is is a huge limitation, frankly, for a lot of small businesses, just access to capital in general, startups are the same way. So I'm curious, you know, what, what are the types of businesses that you think are your sweet spot? You mentioned small business, I'm assuming, what types of small businesses? And, 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 sure. and if you could also, you know, it's a, your company's a marketplace, which I'm assuming is connects small businesses to lenders or people that have capital or lines of credit or whatever. And a lot of people don't understand this. So if, if you could kind of just kind of at the most basic level for, you know, explain it to my grandmother kind of thing, because <laughs> okay. that's usually been the best way to, for people to explain stuff. Okay. So let's first, let's define the marketplace. When we think of the marketplace concept, it's like we were growing up as kids and our parents would take us to the market, which is, you know, which is like a, yeah, a, a building where, where there's a lot of businesses inside of that building where there's vendors selling a variety of different things. You've got the guy selling shoes, maybe someone that sells clo you know, clothing, shirts, hats, et cetera. And maybe there's a restaurants or some food places inside of this marketplace, but it's one place where you're able to essentially purchase, buy, or receive services on a multitude of different types of products and solutions. The Lone Spark marketplace is a marketplace where there are a variety of different loan types or loan categories that Lone Spark provides to its customers. So we, we are a marketplace company. And when you want to look at our sweet spot in terms of what are the types of small businesses that are right at the core of who we're able to help? Good question. Funny question, because that answer is very broad. We work with startup companies who are just figuring out, you know, figuring things out to companies who have, you know, who have been established for a hundred years. We work with companies who have just achieved their first hundred thousand dollars in revenue to companies who have achieved their first 25 million in revenue. So who we help is very broad, who we help the most. I think that's probably the question that I like to answer who we see the most, the types of businesses that, that are pursuing capital the, the most frequently. We see those businesses who are somewhere between $200,000 per year in, in av annual revenue and about $5 million per year in revenue. So when we're considering in a small business, we consider a small business anyone who's less than $5 million per year in gross revenue. Now, the Small Business Association and I think the federal government, they categorize a small business as any business that's under 20 million in, in gross annual revenue. Now, we all know, you know, there are small and really mighty businesses who may be tiny in terms of head, who may be you know, small in terms of headcount and who may be generating a significant amount of revenue, but those companies are fewer and small between and, and far between. 
most small businesses are the main street businesses. So it could be a coffee shop, a, a pizza, a pizza store, a clothing store, the companies that you, the companies and businesses that most of us would, would come in contact with by driving downtown in our local neighborhood or our city. The main street businesses are the businesses that come to Lone Spark most often through our, you know, through our, our, our customers. And so not to confuse the conversation, but Lone Spark works through other companies who, prov who provide the Lone Spark services to their customers. So to Lone Spark, we actually have two customers. First, the co our, our main customer is, could be the company that's providing the services. And then our secondary customer would be the actual applicant who's applying for those services. Lone Spark partners with platforms. We partner with banks. We partner with finance companies. SaaS companies, online information companies, business services companies. And we also partner with accountants, lawyers, and et cetera, who work with small businesses. And through those companies, they offer the Lone Spark services to their customers. That's how Lone Spark does business. So are you like a two-sided marketplace? Would that be correct? Or is it more like a multi-sided so, marketplace? So for example, we allow an, another business like a bank to go to market as a marketplace, but they're utilizing the Lone Spark marketplace as their marketplace, so to speak. Okay. Right? okay. So, so a, here's a really good example of that. Yeah. Let's say I'll use Bank of America. They're not our partner. Okay. We're not, not yet. Partner not with yet. Bank of America not yet. yet not yet. But we'll use it as, as an example. So Bank of America, they offer a number of small business funding products. They offer lines of credit, term loans, SBA loans, and equipment loans for their customers. But, loans, but Bank of America has a very strict set of programs, very strict, and they have a very strict set of guidelines. If, if their applicant doesn't meet the guidelines that would pertain to whatever programs that they offer, then that would turn into a, a no or a decline. And that small business owner would be left without an option or they would have to need to find another bank. But what a company like Bank of America can do is they would partner with LoanSpark and they would offer the LoanSpark marketplace to their customers. So if their customer, if Bank of America's products weren't a great fit, then what Bank of America would do is they would essentially push that customer through a LoanSpark marketplace lender to get a loan. So we allow companies like banks and other companies the opportunity to provide lending products to their customers. That's what we do. Hmm. So, okay. So it's, it's, a, it's almost like this white, like you pointed out, white label, private label product or service that other, like again, like Bank of America could provide. So it just expands their offerings to other people that may, they may or may not want to service directly. Exactly. 100%. Oh, okay. Cool. So, Ooh, cool. But, but that also means that LoanSpark as a provider, we must hold ourselves to the high standards because not only, only are we presenting our, brand, our own brand, but we're representing the brand of the company that's partnered with us. So we have to do an awesome job. Okay. We yeah, have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. It's a requirement. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Interesting. So, so. 200, so your, your definition of small business, 200K to 5 million in revenue, which is Correct. basically what, what most come to your, your services. And it's, huh. yeah, I didn't, huh. I'm not, huh. okay, cool. So, I mean, this must be for, for a small business owner or even a startup as an example, access to capital. Again, I think we talked a little bit about this before. It's so important hard to get. I mean, nowadays it must be that the interest rates as they're skyrocketing, I'm sure a lot of people are worried about just working capital to make their business go. Even a coffee shop that may have revenue coming in still has to have some sort of line of credit or equipment loan or whatever, just to make sure that they have enough to pay payroll. What, what are you seeing in that? And in, in like, given the economic conditions, how, how is that working for people? Well, we've seen the, the change in interest rate has definitely it's, I think what it's done is it's made the decision-making a little more challenging for the small business owner because things are generally more expensive and things are more expensive. You know, when I say things more expensive, loans are more expensive. 
the products and services that a small business needs in order to operate their business is more expensive. So trying to manage what your expenses, yeah, it's just, it's a challenge. As your expenses go up, even if, if revenue stays flat or even if revenue grows, your profit margins decrease. So the small business owner is trying to find solutions so they can still make money, right? And this, so they can still live. They need to eat too. The owner needs to, to eat. And totally. We, we think that's important. You don't want it. So, you're in business because you want to make some money. Yeah. Right. Because you want to make money, but yeah. you're also, you're also sometimes for other reasons as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not of course. always just money. But what we found is the speed in which a small business owner is accepting a loan has slowed. So when you look at where things were a year ago to now, rich interest rates have gone up. I mean, they've tripled Easily, in, in, yeah. in, in many cases. So. Yeah. So it's definitely taking more time for the business owner to make the decision because they need to really evaluate, you know, the, the cost of the financing and determine how, how profitable they can be with the infusion of capital. Now, there are certain things that are necessities. And when I look at necessity lending versus, you know, versus, you know, lending that are, that are, that is for just, you know, rainy day capital, mm -hmm. I find that necessity lending transactions, they, they move quicker. The business owner is making faster decisions and more definitive decisions because the products are necessities. Things, for, for example, the pizza shop owner who needs to upgrade his, his oven. Yeah, I don't know. You started your business. You bought a used piece of equipment. Maybe the oven costs you $7,000. It's been five or six years. You've, you've had the, the product service multiple times, but now it's time to make a $20,000 purchase and get a new pizza oven. Maybe it's a, a double or a triple oven. Maybe he has triple oven and a pizza slice oven. I know all about this because we've done a, our fair share of pizza <laughs> ovens, okay? That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. I, I know my pizza ovens. I know my pizza <laughs> ovens. I know my pizza <laughs> ovens. So, so with, with that said, you know, financing for something like that, it's typically, it's typically where it's as long as the price is relatively in the ballpark and it sounds fair, there's, you know, Business owners are moving pretty quickly. You know, they're, they're tackling those much faster than let's say the working capital loans because working capital loans are more so rainy day loans. It's, I don't want it. The business owner has a feel, feeling or a thought that I don't want to use my general business revenue to fund the next thing that might occur in the business. Or I want a line of credit just in case something happens. Right. So. In those cases, we find the decision-making process is a little longer than it had been in the past. And we, we believe that's because interest rates have increased significantly, which it's to many is shocking. Yeah. I mean, like you said, tripled within a year. Tripled. Yeah. Easily and tripled. Easily in some cases tripled. more. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's always disheartening for someone trying to, I mean, it's like you, like you gave you the example of the pizza shop owner. I mean, the margins aren't great. It's, you know, they typically are running on the edge, like any kind of, I think, retail restaurant, like the model's the model, like you, you don't have much room for error, right? right. So yeah, you got to take those really serious thoughts on it. Wow. You do. And, you know, at the same time, at the same time, for those who have never, who have never applied for a loan before, applied for a business loan, and they're applying in today's environment, it could be, it's very, it's shocking. When you look at the sticker price of a loan compared to, to maybe, you know, a car or a home purchase, a mortgage or something like that, that many people are more experienced with business lending, you know, business loans and business financing vehicles are generally more expensive than consumer financing. Generally, if I go get a mortgage, yeah. I'm maybe paying in today's rates, five and three quarters, six, six yeah. and a half percent. Which is crazy, right? When you look at the last 10 years, two, rates were, two, yeah, two, three yeah. percent. Now we're talking six, you know, yeah. when I started, rates were at 7%. And yeah. Were I great, mean, remember, so. remember the, you know, the seventies and eighties when it was like double yeah. digit, people don't remember, yeah. remember that that was like during Carter, you know, well, people don't want to remember. No, they, no. They they're like, oh, we don't, we don't <laughs> want to go there. It's bad now, but we really yeah. don't want to go back to double digit interest rates, you know, oil prices, you know the oil line, but the gas lines back in the seventies. Wow. Yeah. But okay. On the, but on the commercial side, a, a double digit interest rate is normal. It's very normal and would be considered low. 
a 10% rate would be considered low on the commercial business loan side. Rates can vary between 10% and 40%, wow. all depending on the type of transaction and yeah. the terms. Also right. for business loans, whether it's a loan or a lease or a line of credit, the term of the, the loans are shorter than most business owners where it's their first time applying. It's the terms are much shorter than most would expect. Mm -hmm. A two year term, a three year term, a four year term. Whoa. It seems like it's such a short term, which then creates a higher payment. So yeah. now those are some of the things that I find uh, are shocking to a business owner when they're applying for loans, especially for the first time. Yeah. So, so do you have like on Loan Spark, are there educational things people can educate themselves on and just kind of get the lay of the land? I mean, I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts. You brought up a couple of them. Terms are shorter, interest rates are higher. Are there some just general things that people should just like, just know and or, you know, I can also put some links in the show notes of just like, you know, commercial loans 101 as an example, or commercial loans for entrepreneurs where you just really want to educate yourself so that you don't have that sticker shock or, you know, you can really kind of go through and go, okay, is this really, is the ROI on this important? You know what I mean? Like any, right. any kind of rules of thumb that you would suggest? There are. First, I'll say our marketing team does a great job of of blogging. They have great, have got great blog content, which answers a lot of those questions. What do I do? How do I do? Who should I talk to? What are the questions that I should ask, et cetera, on our website at loanspark.com. Rules of thumb. This is a good, this is, this is a good one. And there are, uh, there are a lot of great companies out there that provide loans. What I find is you, as a business owner, you must be comfortable with the person that is assisting you in your process because the person drives the process, the person that you work with. So let's say if that person was me, then as a business owner, number one, you need to be comfortable with me. And if you're not comfortable with me, and if you have any doubts about me, then there's no doubt that you should not be working with me. For example, if you are yeah. doubting, if you're doubting the person, then you probably shouldn't work with that person. So, so that's what I find is, and that's because there are a lot of unscrupulous individuals and companies, and you won't know, you, you won't know who they are until you're so deep into the transaction, right? But yeah. you can identify who they could be based upon the person that you're working with. If that person isn't consulting with you, truly consulting, if they're only interested in moving you along as quickly as possible, if they're not interested in learning about your business, what you do, how you do it, how you intend to use the capital, what you expect the ROI to be on the investment. All of the, all of those important questions about how you intend to deploy the money, the term in which you feel you're comfortable in paying it back. Why is the thing that you're investing in or buying or building in your company a long-term or a short-term expense? Those types of things. If the individual isn't interested in any of that, then it's probably the wrong person and could be the wrong company because that person is more than likely just interested in getting the loan as quickly as possible, Ooh, making right. money and moving on to the next one. Wow. And so that's one of the things that we do differently at LoanSpark. Our staff, our, our, our sales staff, who we call them advocates. And we call them advocates because their job is to advocate on behalf of the small business owner. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that they're required to do is conduct what we call internally an interview. So their job is to interview the client to understand what, what's their story? Why are they here? What are they looking to accomplish? Why? Have they applied for a loan, received a loan, tried to obtain a loan in the past? For what and why? In this case, what are they looking for? How much do they think they need? For what reason? Have they thought about the ROI? Have they thought about whether this is going to be a long-term, mid-term, or a short-term expense and how to pay for that expense? How should we structure the loan? Have they thought about those types of things? And the reason why we walk the customer through this series of questions is because our advocate, their job is to put together a plan for that client, a plan and a strategy to get them where they need to go with the best, best product at the best price with as, as little burden 
on the small business owner as possible because applying for loans can be burdensome mm -hmm. and some programs are more burdensome than others, just depending on the type of loan that you're looking for. But that's how we do it. And we believe that's the right way to do it. And we believe it's the right way to do it because if you want, if you, if you truly are invested in the business, you must know as much as you can know about that business to help that person make the most informed decision possible. So, so it's more of a consultative approach, sales 100%, approach. 100%. 100%. Running through the boiler room, whatever. 100%. That is, is so famously done in movies. It, that's so fascinating because, you know, it is it is one of those scary processes, I think, for people, especially ones that have never done it before. You know, I think, I think it was one of the companies I was at, we went after an SBA loan. You know, and just the process and who does it and what you had to do, you know, it's totally different than, a, you know, a consumer loan, as an example, like you mentioned, right. car or a house or whatever. Like those are, I wouldn't call them cookie cutter, but generally there's a lot of rules. Is, is there, I'm curious, are there less rules in the commercial lending space? It seems like there's a lot more, I mean, you mentioned a couple of bad actors, but I mean, is it just more loosey goosey like for lack of a better word? Uh, well, short answer is yes, but yes and no. So depending on the type of loan that is being sought, the process is different. But what I would say, what really, where the differences are between commercial and consumer has a lot and why there are likely the number of unscrupulous actors that have been allowed to exist is because of the regulation on the, you know, the, 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 the just the industry regulation, commercial products are not over-regulated consumer products are heavily regulated. So because of the heavy regulation, it prohibits certain individuals from being able to offer you know, those types of transactions. So there are, there's a lower barrier to entry for a commercial lending company to exist than there is for a consumer lending company to exist. There's a general lower barrier, barrier of entry for an individual who is the spokesperson, right? The salesperson for those commercial companies to be allowed to offer commercial products, lower barrier to entry versus on the consumer side, there's a higher barrier to entry. Yeah. I wonder if it's because they, I guess the assumption is if you're doing a commercial loan, it's a business that they know a little bit about business or like, you know what I mean? I wonder if, if it's, I wonder if it's that. I mean, I understand why having a little more flexibility and then I understand why like I think it has loans. to do with, I think it has to do with the fact that on the consumer side, the, it's the individual that's making the decision. It's a right. person, right? The loan is being made to a person and that person is making the credit decision for themselves. And that credit decision, what good or bad will affect the person or on the business side, it's the business entity that is making a credit decision, that business entity might be managed by a consortium of people, right? And so I think that's where the difference is. So it's the business entity that's signing for a loan and making a decision versus a person, the government, the law says a natural person, right? Who's, yeah. who's making the credit decision. Interesting. But it is what it is. So because yeah. of that, a small business owner just must be informed. And the, and the information is you, you must be comfortable with the person and just you know, validate that individual and ensure, and just your gut will tell you, you know, follow your gut. Yeah. If you feel comfortable with that person, then work with that individual up yeah. until you get the loan offer. And if you're not comfortable with the loan offer, don't accept the loan offer that you're not comfortable with yeah. and to, right until you fully vet it, ask the right questions, see it in writing, those types of things. Yeah. So it does seem like it's a very personable person relationship. Like anything in business, I think most people would agree that it's all about the relationships and, and it seems like it's the same thing, you know, have a good relationship with who you're going to get money from and make sure you're comfortable with that. I mean, correct. it's probably a good lesson for all types of business relationships as well. I mean, I would agree. Yeah. I think it's, it comes down to the people and even though there's 
generative AI and all these sort of things that are like literally like this entire tsunami. I mean, every day I, there's another tool, right? Every day there's yeah. another thing. I think it's really going to really still does come down to the individual. And I would agree. I mean, there are a lot of lending tools and more so on the consumer side that are driven to remove the interaction between human beings and to save us, to save time. And, and that's great. And, you know, LoanSpark has some of those tools, right. but, you know, all, every loan that we do, there is a, there are, there's human interaction. There is some relationship being built with a person. And we believe that creates trust in, in, in the relationship that creates trust versus doing business with a website. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the speed of trust. I think there was even a book about that where it's such a powerful thing when it comes to doing business with anybody. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just interesting in this day and age where, you know, technology is just flooded with technology that really just the fundamentals matter. And it sounds like, you know, what you're doing at Lone Spark is just like the fundamentals of business have never changed throughout millennia. Do business with people you're comfortable with, have a fair deal, get to know them. You know, they have to like, the, has to match, I think is the, the term I like to use. You have to be compatible, you know? Correct. And, Set, um, you know, you know, only promise what you can deliver, be transparent, you know, don't just say what the customer needs to hear, right? Those type yeah. of basic principles, be yeah. a good, be, be, be a good actor. There's plenty of business to be done by doing business the right way, right? right. No, no, it's good. And I think a lot of interesting, there's a lot of young entrepreneurs that think it's all about the hustle, you know, but. You know, as I get older, I've just realized that it's about the relationships. It's about your integrity. The only thing you have is your integrity and your word. Correct. I know that you're like above the words. I don't think there's a shortcut for that. There's some ways to accelerate it, you know, with tools and, you know, of course, doing the mundane and getting things quickly done. But again, the speed of trust is the pace it goes. You know, you just... Right. I think you just got to be comfortable with that. And I agree a hundred percent. And one of the things we, we, at least we found with our approach, as I, as, as we discussed a few minutes ago, that when our repeat customers, the, the applicants, the merchants who are receiving the loans, they almost always, when they want their second and third and fourth loans, they're calling the original agent back versus just going on the website and applying. Yeah, they're actually calling the person and then building the relationship with the individual, which we think is amazing because, you know, we, we feel like we're a little old school the way where, you know, we want you to have your person, right? You're the, 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 the girl or the guy that you trust at Lone Spark or at the brand that Lone Spark is representing. We want you to have your person. Oh, I'm going to call my guy, Mike, because I trust Mike. So I'm calling him back. Even if I'm calling Mike to explore the potential future of a, of a, of a future loan that may not happen for months down the road. Yes. I trust him enough to yes. call him to say, Hey, Mike, I'm thinking that I might need capital in the future. What should I do? What should I think yes. about? What are some of the ways that I should prepare myself for that? And our customers, they call back their original agent. And that just, you know, that I love it. I mean, it's just, well, I, I think get what it happens. I well, think it's and, just awesome. I mean, you know, that's the whole referral. That's the whole advocacy that a lot of people don't even spend time fostering. I mean, it's way easier to do business with a customer you've already done business with that you serve than to go grab a new one. And I think it's just great, great that you guys are having that model and really have that philosophy. And, you know, Michael, it's just been such a great, great conversation. I really appreciate it. And good luck on Lone Spark. This seems like such a great, thoughtful way to go about it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Entrepreneur Ethos Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did creating it. My hope is that you learn something that can make you a little bit better. If you enjoyed the podcast, please do share it with friends and review it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also join my email list by visiting theentrepreneurethos.com to get my thoughts on what I'm doing to get better, as well as what I'm working on. You can also pick up my book, The Entrepreneur Ethos, if you want to learn the traits values, and beliefs that I think we need to build a more ethical, inclusive, and resilient entrepreneur, and frankly, world community. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at The Daily MBA, and let me know if you have any questions 
or recommendations for a guest you'd like me to talk to. Also, drop me a note if you try anything we talked about on this or any other episode. I'd love to hear what's working for you. Until next time, keep getting better.